AB 10-3, here we go. We have some real life problems today that involve limits. All right, so the very first one is a hot tub. So if you start a hot tub, you turn it on, you let it run for a while, legally they're not supposed to exceed 104 degrees. They used to allow them to exceed 104 Fahrenheit, but then they started having uh, cases of like heart attack and stroke and things like that. So they said, look, we can't let these things get too hot. You know, people passing out in these things. So very dangerous. If this is the equation of the temperature, so T is time, all right? T is in, let me check out my sheet right here. Here it is on the table. T was in what, minutes or, uh, yeah, minutes, okay. T is in minutes, capital T is in temperature Fahrenheit. All right, is it safe? How do they figure out if some of this stuff is safe? Well, every hot tub has its own equation, right? Every type of hot tub does. And so, well, how are we supposed to figure out if it's safe? How is that even a limit question? Well, there is a kind of a limit which is 104 degrees, that should be the limit, right? Wait a minute, we talked about this before the other day. A limit is kind of like a horizontal asymptote. You remember this? Only if you go to infinity, though, do you get a horizontal asymptote. So now, wait a minute. Why don't we turn on the hot tub for infinite minutes? Now, is that possible? No, of course not. But turning it on for infinite minutes is kind of comparable to turning it on for many minutes, like hours and hours and hours, maybe several days, and just let it keep going and see if it exceeds 104 degrees, all right? So there's not much difference between leaving it on for, let's say, a thousand minutes compared to infinite minutes. It's relatively the same thing. Let's just find out if it has a horizontal asymptote, all right? So you take the limit as little t, lowercase t, approaches infinity, the number of minutes that it's been turned on. And then we write our equation over here. Let's put it in parentheses. I'm going to show you a little trick. 103 minus, and I want you to put the 103 minus k up kind of high, and then a fraction bar, okay? What's going on here? All right. There's a negative exponent. To do infinite limits, it's easier to do infinite limits, I find, when you have a positive exponent and not a negative exponent, all right? Where does the negative exponent move? You remember this? Doesn't the negative move the e to the bottom? Now here's the mistake that students make. They'll take the e, they'll move it to the bottom, they'll put the whole problem over the e. No. PEMDAS. This goes back to elementary school, basically. PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Isn't this parentheses times e to the something. Multiplication comes earlier in PEMDAS. So these two are kind of linked in the same group. Subtraction comes later. The 103 has nothing to do with the e to the negative power. So you're going to move it downstairs only under the 103 minus k, only under the parentheses. And we're going to make it e to the positive. 0.01t. I, you can drop the parentheses now because the 103 minus k is by itself, so you don't need parentheses. See how it does not affect that first number? Just don't do that and you'll be okay. All right? So we screwed it under. Okay. When performing an infinite limit, the very first thing you should do with any infinite limit is take infinity and just plug it into the problem, even though infinity is not a number, it's more of a concept, right? But you can still plug infinity in in theory and just kind of picture it as 1 million, 1 billion, 1 trillion, like really big numbers. So you would get 103 would be left alone minus 103 minus k would be left alone e to the 0 0.01 times infinity, which is like saying 1% of infinity, it's still infinity, right? It's too big, right? Okay. That's how you plug in infinity. Now, sometimes that won't work. Remember the indeterminate forms? If you get infinity over infinity, that's indeterminate. If that happens, you better try something else. We'll talk about that later. But if you plug in infinity and it works, great. And this is going to work because picture this. What is e to the infinity? Wouldn't that be a massive number? You might as well call it infinity, right? What is 103 minus k? Well, I don't know. I don't know what k is. It depends on the hot tub. 103 minus k, though, is a constant. It's finite. If you get whatever number of test questions right out of infinity, you pretty much got a zero, remember? If the denominator blows up gigantic, the whole fraction shrinks to almost nothing. 
Well, it, well, can you ever get to infinity? Nobody can. So can the whole fraction ever shrink all the way to zero? Impossible, but remember limits. It's not what you get to, it's where you're headed. And you're headed to practically nothing, so you might as well go ahead and call it zero because that's the way it's headed. So 103 minus zero is 103. What was this again? It was a temperature, 103 degrees Fahrenheit. And it said, don't go past 104 because that's dangerous. If you leave it on for infinite minutes, it never gets past 103. And what did it say, safe or not? It said, will it exceed that temperature? Answer is no. I guess here's your proof right here. All this is your proof, but the answer is simply no. Can't be done, okay? Let's try letter B. So here we have an experiment I actually did with my own severely out of date iPhone 5. I plugged it into the wall at 50%. And it followed this very closely. I did it like three different times and it followed this equation every single time. So this is how fast it recharged. This is why this is an exponential, right? Are we talking about like exponential growth and decay here today? I should have pointed that out with the hot tub. Exponential growth and decay. When the iPhone recharges, okay, let's say this is 100% up here. Is your phone gonna recharge and just blast through 100% and then suddenly be like, 200% recharge? What the heck is 200% recharged? That's not even mathematically possible. Even 101% recharged is like, that doesn't make sense, right? Doesn't it actually go to 100% and stop and then shuts off, right? So what it's doing is it's bending. It's actually curving and going into 100 gradually, all right? Totally makes sense, right? So it says now a couple of key words there. Nice close-up of the eraser. It says the word eventually. Okay, that's part of it. But especially, do you see on the sheet where it says levels off? Eventually, that rate levels off and becomes almost constant. That is a clue that you're looking for a horizontal asymptote. Okay, levels off. Oh wait, isn't that what a horizontal asymptote does? It kind of levels off the curve. So if you see that catchphrase, I'm showing you all the ways they word it today on the AP test and in college, all right? If you see that phrase levels off, it's a horizontal asymptote. And the only way to find a horizontal asymptote is to just let t blow up to infinity, or later we'll also check the negative infinity direction, but that won't make sense today because we're gonna leave it plugged into the wall for infinite minutes and it should basically just shut off when it gets to 100%. All right, so let's apply the infinite limit to this up here. It's gonna be 100 minus, I'm gonna put 1.53 up high, put a fraction bar. What do we have here? We've got another negative power and those are not easy to deal with if you're doing infinite limits. So I'm gonna move that term right there under. Now see students put it under the whole thing. Don't do that because of PEMDAS. These two are linked by multiplication. The subtraction is an afterthought. These two are together. So the 1.024 only goes under the 1.53. Please do not put it under the 100. They are not related. And you get this. And we used to have to the negative t, and now we have to the positive t because we made a move. Now it's easier. Okay, so infinite limits. Step one, take infinity, plug it in for t, see what happens. All right, as long as it's not indeterminate, and we don't have indeterminate conversations, you'll be fine. If it is indeterminate, I'll show you later how to get rid of that. Okay, so you get this, and of course, 1.024 is larger than 1, okay, slightly larger than 1. If you take any number above 1 and you take it to the infinity power, it becomes infinity, all right? Although, do be careful. If you remember things like uh, decay problems back in my integrated 3 class, like if that base is like 0.37, which is less than 1, like the Chernobyl radiation that decays over time, 0.37 to the infinity gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and goes to zero. So be careful, make sure this is over one. Okay, so anything over one to the infinity is infinity, but 1.53 out of infinity is practically nothing. Let's just make that a zero. We'll just circle it and call it a zero. And you get 100 minus zero is 100. Oh, wait a minute. Well, the whole thing is actually trying to gravitate to 100% recharged, right?
So this is the temperature as the pork chop heats up. All right, we're gonna find the initial value and then we're gonna find half the limiting value, okay? There's another catchphrase. What have we seen so far? We saw levels off. We said, what happens if you run the hot tub forever? Now we're seeing the phrase limiting value, all right? Limiting value. Wouldn't that be another way of saying horizontal asymptote, right? A limiting value, a value that you can't seem to get past. So all these little ways they phrase it, just look at it and go, oh, it's just another infinite limit. Let's start with the initial value. Do you remember my class? Do you remember even not calculus, but integrated three, probably pre-calculus, probably integrated two. Initial value means in the beginning, what happened? Wouldn't you simply plug in X equals zero to get the initial value? So the first one's easy. Plug in X equals zero and Y would be 500 minus 420 E to the negative 0.5 times zero is indeed zero. And then you get 420 times one is 420, five, or 500 minus 420 is 80 over two, which is 40 is the initial value. That was a Y. Y is degrees Fahrenheit. So the pork chops are 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So they probably just came out of the fridge. They're cold. They're, they're all marinated in some delicious marinade. And now we're gonna put them on the grill and we're gonna heat them up, all right? Find half the limiting value, all right? So first, the limiting value. The limiting value says, how hot will those pork chops get? If you put pork chops on a grill and you start cooking out and you leave them on there forever, they're gonna get really burnt, all right? But do they grow and grow and grow in temperature and eventually get like 10,000 degrees and eventually get like 100,000 degrees? And then like at that point, they would just like melt a column right through the center of the earth. They're not going to do that, right? No, of course not. If you put something on the grill, it's going to get really burnt. But isn't the temperature going to eventually have a boundary that it can't cross? You can't put something on a grill and make it 100,000 degrees. It's not going to happen. So... Let's turn the grill on for infinite hours, but nobody can get to infinity. So let's let X approach infinity. That's what a limit is, right? Let's let it head towards infinity and see what happens, all right? So we're gonna let this pork chop go, and we're, gonna just, gonna, we're just gonna do an experiment. We're just gonna burn this thing to a crisp, sadly. We're gonna waste it, and we're gonna see what this grill does. How hot does it get, okay? Well, the fraction is 500 minus, oh, let's put 420 up high. I don't like that negative exponent. Here's another mistake students make. They take that e to the negative and they think, let's see, well, Mr. Wade said negative power moves it to the bottom. We've been saying that since integrated three. Do you mean move it down to the two? No way, don't do it, okay? If that 500 minus had not been there, yes the E would go to the bottom. But when you have the 500 minus, you are disrespecting the 500. You can't tear this off of the 420 and then stick it on the two and completely ignore the fact that the two is supposed to be shared between the two, but the E is not supposed to be shared between the two. See the problem? When you put it on the bottom, it's now shared, but it's not supposed to be shared. It has nothing to do with 500. So watch carefully. Take the E, scoot it under the 420 and make it E to the positive 0.5X. Keep the whole thing over two. You kind of see what the game is today? It's kind of, it's very similar in every problem. It's gonna look slightly different, but it's still move it under the thing it's attached to and nothing else. That's the mistake people make. Okay, now you can use our game here, which is Step one, if you do an infinite limit, just plug it in and see what happens. And often you can get away with it, not always. 500 minus 420 over e to the infinity is infinity over two. 420 out of infinity is nothing. But I got 420 test questions right, Mr. Wade. Well, there were infinite test questions on the test, so you pretty much missed the other infinite, right? You got a zero. 500 minus zero is 500 over two. Half of 500 is 250. I guess I must be done. No, wait a minute. 
However hot this grill is turned on right now, if you leave it on forever, the grill's not going to get past 250. That's the asymptote of the grill, which is actually not very hot. You can easily get an outdoor grill up to like 500 degrees. So somebody has this on really low, low heat, all right? 250 is the cap, but it said find half of the limiting value. So you just found the overall limiting value. You just found the horizontal asymptote. This pork chop's not going to ever get past 250 because somebody put it on too low. Half the limiting value, just don't forget to go back and take half of that number. So the real answer is half of 250, which is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So once you reach 125 degrees Fahrenheit, you're half of the heat you're eventually going to conduct in that pork chop right there. Okay? And the weird thing about asymptotes, it takes like a few minutes to get to 125. And then it takes basically longer and like the rest of eternity, theoretically, to get to the 250, right? Because see, here's the thing that students don't realize about horizontal asymptotes. You quickly get near it, and then you spend forever just trying to get smaller and smaller and smaller gaps, but you've already gotten super close to it. That's interesting about those asymptotes. Okay, let's get a close-up of the board. Let's do letter D. Now, this one's really interesting because we have P of X here. This is the probability that you're going to die by a certain age. So it's kind of like predicting the future. How long will you live? Well, there are all these factors, of course. But I did a lot of research on just the average American female, and this was the equation. All right? And then the average American male, they have another equation. They don't live quite as long, but close. So X is going to be your age. So you're going to pick an age. You know, what are the chances that I'm going to make it until the age of, you know, 25, right? Well, almost 100% pretty much. P is going to be the probability of death basically any time before that or up to that age, all right? Okay, so let's do an example here. Just, just for fun, this is just like a side note here without a limit. Let's just say uh, the ladies out there watching this right now are thinking, hmm, what are the chances if I live in America that I'm going to live to be, let's say, 75, all right? We'll just use that age. Okay, well, the average female lives beyond that. So actually... Many, many, the majority of women actually do live to be 75, even though that seems so old, right? So P of X, all right? Actually, this is going to become not P of X. Let's call it P of 75, even more specific. P of 75 would be, we got one on top over 1 plus E to the 18.7. Hey, look at this. Your real life probability of living has an E built into it. All this stuff in real life has the number E built into it. Isn't that amazing? Negative 0.22 times 75 years old. All right. Okay. And we'll just round this off. So I threw that into a calculator just out of total curiosity to see what would happen. And I ended up with 0 0.0998. Now, what does that mean? Of course, that's a percent, right? It says the probability. All right. Probability is like a percent. If you scoot the decimal twice, one, two, isn't that 9.98? Now, wait a minute. Let's think. Is that bad news? You only have a 9.98. What is that? Like 10% chance of living to 75? No. No. Good news. Good news here. That's the probability of dying before or at 75. So an American female has about a 10% chance of dying before or all the way up to 75. Guess what? That means the other 90% of women will live beyond and make it to their 76th birthday. So that's the percent that didn't make it, okay? So your chances are very high. Seems pretty surprising though, doesn't it? That 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 only 10% wouldn't make it? You're like, but that's so old. But you know what? Guess what? The average American female actually lives to be 78.54 average. Anybody remember my integrated three class? You remember the bell curve? Anybody remember this, right? And the average is right down the middle. And you've got like a whole bunch of people kind of centered around here. And very few people die this early. And very few people die like at 110, you know. But then most people are in the middle. Well, if that's the middle, there's a very steep drop off. And 75 is like way over here somewhere. Okay? So most of you are going to be fine. You're going to live over here. Mr. Wade would be fine if I'd stop eating all the uh, the fried chicken and french fries. Hasn't that been like a running gag in my class, like as long as you had me right, Mr. Wade, with all the bad foods he eats? Yeah. Okay. I love food. All right. Oh, again, it says find the limiting value. That means if you go forever, there's going to be some kind of barricade, right? Some barrier, some limit that you can't seem to cross. Okay. Well, yeah, because nobody's going to live forever. So there's got to be some kind of barrier here to this percent, right? 
Let's find out what it is and what it means. Take the limit as your age goes to infinity. Nobody's going to live to infinity, right? Nobody's ever lived past 130, 140 in modern times. But we're still going to go to infinity and see what happens. So, because what does that do? That accomplishes the point, right? Um, so infinity, going to infinity basically means go to big numbers, all right? Go to, go to like super old. All right. Now, see this? This is the culprit right here. The one that has the negative power and the variable is going to be kind of cumbersome to plug in infinity. It'll trick you. Let's not trick ourselves. Let's move it. Now, see, here's where people make a mistake. Mr. Wade, doesn't negative power mean I can move it from downstairs to upstairs? Nope, because that silly plus one right there. If the one plus wasn't on it, you could move the negative to the top. With the one plus, you cannot detach it where it should only be with its other e-buddy and then put it on the top where it's now shared, that doesn't make sense. You scoot it under what it's with. Isn't that the theme today? So we scoot it under the one that it's with, not the one plus. And you make it e to the positive 0.22x. So that's like a big fraction inside of a fraction, which is okay for limits. We're gonna get rid of it anyway. You see where it moved there? Be very careful, all right? Only move it with its buddy. Now plug in infinity. And you get 1 over 1 plus e to the 18.7 over e to the infinity, which is infinity. Now, let me tell you something, folks. e to the 18.7 is a massive number. But even that gigantic number over infinity is zero. But Mr. Wade, I got like 100 trillion questions right on the test. Well, there were infinite questions. Sorry, play again. That's zero. You get one over one plus zero. All right, everybody see how to play this game now? And you get one over one, which is one. Final answer, one. Now let's think about, is that logical in real life? One? Wait a minute. Does that mean I live to be age one? No, that's not what that means. No. What was the point zero nine nine eight? Wasn't that scoot scoot, double scoot? Wasn't it a percent? Scoot scoot? One whole means 100%. Probability of death, oh yeah. If you go to infinity and you go to like way older ages, let's just pick a ridiculous age like 200 years old, 100% probability of death before that age. Doesn't that make sense? So 100% chance you're not going to make it to infinity or any large age. That totally makes sense in real life, doesn't it? I hope you all got that because it really does make sense. Okay, now let's try letter E at the very bottom. So now we leave the word problems behind. Now we actually are just finding horizontal asymptotes specifically. Okay, so you'll have an equation and it'll say, where are the horizontal asymptotes? All right, well, guess what? If there is a limit or boundary when I go to infinity, that's a horizontal asymptote, right? Now, if this came out to be infinity, that's no, that's no boundary, right? Oh, don't go past infinity. Well, that's, that's not a boundary. So if the answer is infinity, there is no horizontal asymptote. If the answer is finite, an actual constant or number, that is the boundary or the limit, okay? So let's just go to infinity and see if this thing settles into a certain place or if it just goes like a parabola, like x squared, would just rise forever, there's no boundary. Let's see if this thing has a, a boundary right here. So remember what we said, you can take infinity and plug it in for x as long as you can get away with that, and you can. 1 over infinity squared plus 1, that would be 1 over infinity, and guess what? Because infinity plus 1 is infinity, right? 1 over infinity is 0. It does have a boundary. So if I go out to like, you know, if I plug in like 1 million squared, 1 billion squared, 1 trillion squared, bigger and bigger and bigger numbers, as I go to infinity, the overall value, which is called a y-coordinate, seems to be getting very close to zero. That is a horizontal asymptote. Now, how do you write it, though? How do you write the answer? If, it, if I ask for the limit, you just say the number, zero. If I ask for the horizontal asymptote, isn't the equation of a horizontal line y equals number? not just the number, so you have to put the y equals on it. That's the only difference between an infinite limit and a horizontal asymptote, by the way. Just put the letter y on it, put an equal sign, and that's the major difference, okay? By the way, that is the x-axis. 
this graph can't seem to get past the x-axis. Now we don't know yet, is it the kind of asymptote where the plane's trying to come in for a landing and it never gets to the runway? Or is it coming from like underneath and it can never break the surface of the ocean, let's say? We don't know yet. It could be coming from either direction. That, that's not specific here. It hasn't been specified, but we do know the boundary at least, okay? Now there's something we haven't mentioned yet. Not all horizontal asymptotes pull in the curve as you go to infinity. Some graphs pull the curve in as you go to negative infinity. There are two ways that a horizontal asymptote can happen. And by the way, here's a classic example. You don't have to draw this on your paper, but you all know the exponential growth graph. And the exponential growth graph has this asymptote on the x-axis. When you go to infinity, exponential growth completely ignores the asymptote. It doesn't have to obey the asymptote going to infinity necessarily. But when you go to negative infinity, end behavior, remember end behavior in integrated three? When you go to negative infinity, the y coordinates are trying to land and they get closer and closer to zero. So you see like on exponential growth, you see how it obeys the asymptote going to negative infinity, but ignores it going to positive infinity. So when you look for horizontal asymptotes, when that's the question, you can't just check infinity as we've done today. You can also check negative infinity to see if maybe it's a different asymptote, or maybe there's not an asymptote at all, or maybe it's the same. Limit as x approaches negative infinity, all right? Negative infinity is just like positive infinity. Plug it in, see if you can get away with it. Negative infinity quantity squared turns to positive infinity. So it's one over infinity plus one, which is one over infinity which is zero. Ah, so both directions, unlike exponential growth, whatever this graph looks like, it obeys the asymptote in both directions. Interesting. So the answer is still y equals zero. It covers both of those. You don't have to stipulate the direction, but you do have to check both in case they're different or in case one of them doesn't exist at all. Okay. By the way, you don't have to know this graph, but totally for fun, one over x squared plus one happens to be the bell curve from integrated three that we mentioned earlier. Imagine centered at the y-axis, a little curve like a bell, like we used to talk about this standard deviation and all that kind of stuff and the, the average. So the bell is, as they call it, asymptotic to the x-axis y equals zero, both going to the right forever and going to the left forever, and it never quite gets down to the asymptote. How about that? So when we did all those examples like IQ, like how people's IQ ranks on the bell curve, well, then you just change like the number up top and the number on the side, but the, 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 the structure stays the same. The parent function stays the same. Interesting, right? Okay, now let's go to the back page and finish this lesson off.